We recommend you to watch our previous video on mechanical energy, link in the description. Welcome, today we're going to be talking about the principle of conservation of mechanical energy. So, today we're going to be talking about this principle that states that the total mechanical energy in an isolated system remains constant. So, it is the total mechanical energy in an isolated system remains constant. Well, each and every principle of conservation talks about the conservation of something. It can be the principle of conservation of charge, the principle of conservation of energy. So this principle just suggests that when there is when there is actually a system uh, that is actually using up energy or a system that involves energy, mechanical energy in this case, it will remain constant initially and finally. So that means that the mechanical energy that you observe at the first will be the mechanical energy you observe at the last. So this tells you that no energy is lost. Specifically here, no mechanical energy is lost. So here, the mechanical energy at A is equals to the mechanical energy at B, meaning that A represents the first, uh, the, the 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 start of this whole system, and then B represents the end of the system. So you can say initial or final is the same thing. So here, remember that mechanical energy is given by the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy. Same applies for mechanical energy at point B. Well. Uh, sometimes they, they might give you the mass of an object initially or they can give you the velocity of an object and all that so here we can expand this formula to half m v squared plus m g h is equals to so here let's specifically write at a at a and then here at b and then here at b so here this is at a and then this is half mv squared plus mgh at b so this is all at b and then this is at b also this is at a and then this is at a so here we just expanded the formula of the of mechanical energy that such as that there is no mechanical energy lost in an isolated system meaning that the mechanical energy you're going to find during the first uh the during the initial initial points of your system and the final points of your system is going to actually be the same thing very same thing okay so how do you actually use this to calculate for example they give you uh, here a statement states, uh, states that a 2 kg ball is dropped from rest okay so a 2 kg ball is dropped from rest from rest at a and then continues and says that determine the maximum velocity determine the maximum velocity of the ball at B before impact so this is our statement telling us that we have got a ball at a position a let me actually try to draw a ball here this is your ball at position number a so let's name this position a and then it uh, it is at rest so it tells you that in the statement a 2 kg ball is dropped from rest 
So if it says from rest at A, it means that at this point, the velocity of the ball is equal to zero meters per second. So whenever you hear the statement that says this states that an object is at rest, it means that the velocity of an object is zero or the object is not in motion or it does not move at all. So here, this ball is dropped from rest so it means it was what it was where from rest okay so here let's say we are given the height from where it is dropped so it is dropped at a height of about four meters so the height is four meters at which this ball is dropped so now they want you to calculate the maximum velocity here they did not ask us to calculate the mechanical energy but the maximum velocity remember that we expanded this formula here and then parts of our formula had <coughs> had v and another v so all those these are actually representing velocity so the reason for expanding formulas is to actually find other things which are within the types of energies respectively like kinetic energy and potential energy so here we want to actually determine the maximum velocity of this ball so here we're going to use the very same uh, law of conservation of energy so the law of conservation of energy that just states that the total energy of an isolated system remains constant so it relates with this principle of conservation of mechanical energy that states that mechanical energy at A is equals to the mechanical energy at B. Okay, let us look at what is our A and then what is our B. Let's draw this ball here again and say this is our point B. So at point B, the ball has dropped. So by dropped, it just means it's now at the earth surface. So the height, at, uh, the height from the surface is actually zero meters over here. And then we want the actual velocity here just before it actually, the, the statement states that just before impact, right? So it means just before it actually uh, landed on that surface what was its velocity what was its speed all the way from that point a to point b so here what do we do we use we utilize this formula very carefully so remember that the ki the, the the mechanical energy is is the sum of the kinetic energy and the potential energy at a which is equal to the sum of the kinetic energy and the potential energy at b all right so here do we have the kinetic energy no we don't do we have the potential energy no we don't do we have the kinetic energy for b and for the, the potential energy for b no we do not so we have to expand our formula having half mv squared which is representing the kinetic energy plus mgh this is all at stage number A, meaning that it is at this position, at this position, which is A, and then is equals to half of mv squared again over here, plus mgh, but then at this position, it is at position number B. All right, now we go to the substitutions. That's where you should, very, you should be very, very careful as to what do you substitute. Let us see what we have at A. At A, we have got a velocity of zero. The mass of the object does not change because of its position in the gravitational field. So here, we're going to substitute half. The mass of the object is two, as we are told in the statement, is two kg. And then the velocity at this, at, at this stage, remember we said that it is at rest according to the statement. Therefore, the velocity at A is equals to zero. So it's 0 squared plus mgh. The mass is 2. The gravitational acceleration is constant here on Earth. And then the height of the object. Right now we want to check exactly how high is it from a surface. So let's say this is our surface. It is 4 meters upwards. Therefore we have to mention the height as 4. So now we have actually substituted everything that I append for A. So this is actually the mechanical energy of A. Now we go to position number B, whereby we have half of the mass does not change. This it remains two. And then the velocity, it is what we are looking for. We are looking for the velocity at which this ball dropped 
just before it landed or just before impact. So we're going to write zero, um, I mean V squared because we do not know it. And then we add it to the potential energy having uh, the potential energy is now uh, going to be mass of 2 kg multiplied by gravitational acceleration of 9.8 meters per second. Now we go to position number B. So position number B, the height changes. This ball has dropped to a surface, meaning that the the height or the different, the, the just, just this height from, from, from here is actually zero, meaning that at B, the ball is actually landed on the surface. So here we're going to substitute zero. Okay, now can you see that we've got only one missing thing, which is V. So V is our velocity at which this ball dropped to point B. So here we can see that everything is multiplied by zero. We can say zero plus two times n comma eight times four. That gives us 78 comma four. So 78 comma four. Here remember that we do not have V squared. Therefore we have to just deal with half of two. What is half of two? Half of two is one. And then we've got our V squared over there. And then here we have multiplied with zero. Therefore everything's going to be just zero over there. So now we have got, we can just get rid of the zeros because they don't actually matter. We've got V squared is equals to 78 comma four. Okay, is your answer correct here? It is wrong in two ways. First of all, we're not looking for V squared, we are looking for V. And secondly, it does not have a unit. So first we have to establish the value of V on its own. We're not looking for V squared. Therefore, how do you get rid of a square? You have to use a square root. So you do that on the both sides because there's an equal sign, meaning that whatever you do on the left hand side, you also do at the right hand side. Therefore, this squared is actually going to disappear reason because there is actually this square root therefore we we'll remain with v is equal to the square root of 78,4 that is 8,85 meters per second are we done no we are not done still remember that velocity is not a scalar quantity but a vector quantity so we have to describe the magnitude and the direction at which this vector of or, or at which this ball is actually moving to so this is moving downwards what proof do we have that this thing is moving downwards? It is because this actually ended with a height of zero. It initially had four. It means that the height reduced, therefore it moved downwards. So this is what you do when you are calculating the velocity using the law of conservation of mechanical energy to actually be determining certain parameters within these formulas. Thank you for watching. Do recommend your friends to stay tuned.